think you um, practice this skill with your students and we'll be asking you to recognize when the skill is being displayed in a video that we're going to watch in a little while and we'll do that through chat. We'll be exploring some navigating system sample activities found in the complete TIFF and again we'll have you raise your hand and unmute yourself or you can use the chat for that as well. Then we're going to be talking about ACEs as an acronym not for academic career and employability skills but as a way to organize a lesson plan by assessing what skills we already have included, thinking about how we can complement those skills by integrating new pieces from the TIFF and then evaluating and studying. So we're going to introduce a new, a new way to think about the ACEs acronym. We will be watching a video. The video is in YouTube. Um, we will need you, most of you will probably have to copy and paste that video into a new um, internet browser. The video link is in your material section here in GoToTraining. Um, if your workplace has any blocks on YouTube and there's a way for you to override that block, if you could start maybe thinking about setting that up now, that would be great. Um, so we'll watch the video. That's about a 17, 18 minute video. And then we're going to be talking about all the fabulous navigating system skills that we see in that classroom video. And then at the end of our time today, we're going to be looking at ways to tiff the tiff our classroom by looking at some routines and norms and learning task formats. Okay? So that's our agenda for today. And if you have any questions, please be sure to, to chat to us or raise your hand, okay? I'd like to point out that on your screen you'll see materials, and as Stephanie was saying, there is that link to that YouTube video of a lesson being taught, but then there's also the webinar handouts that we'll be using, so you might need to download those now. Okay, as you guys know, ACEs is the Academic Career and Employability Skills. It's a, a mission that we're being, uh, being brought to all areas of Minnesota and recently to COAB uh, to all areas of the United States. And it's a mission to ensure that ABE programs are able to provide effective contextualized instruction that's integrating post-secondary education and training readiness employability skills and career readiness at every level. We're just giving you guys some ideas today on how you can be incorporating the navigating systems into your level. Okay, so we're going to do kind of a pretest here. We're going to launch a poll to see where people are at with navigating systems. So when you go through these questions, you're going to be evaluating your current integration of navigating system skills into your instruction. So you'll go through and respond to each of these questions here. Okay. I'm going to la launch the poll. Okay. And here we go. You should be able to view some questions right now on your screen. So if you cannot see those, Please chat out to us, but you should be seeing right now a few questions that you should respond to. Okay, oh, it's not. So we have 40% of our people viewing this poll have voted, 50%, 70%, 80%. We have 90% of the people have responded to this poll, and I think we're, we're going to give it maybe one more, one couple more seconds here, but I think that might be all of us. 
And so we're going to close the poll and we're going to share the results. So hopefully you can now see the poll results. So, wow, nobody, zero people said, I very intentionally integrate navigating system skills. So I guess you're all in the right place then because that's what we're going to be focusing on today. 11% said it's part of what I do but not very intentional. Okay, so it looks like the majority of us are in the middle. 56%, I know I'm doing it, but not really sure maybe um, what it looks like every day. And then 11%, I kind of wing it. I teach it if it comes up. 22% said, huh? What is navigating systems? All right, so when I look at this poll, I feel really encouraged and excited that more than half of us say that they know that they're doing it. That is fabulous. So you know what we're going to do right now? I'd like to take one minute, and if people wouldn't mind, can a few people maybe unmute yourself? Would you be able to talk to us for just a minute about what, about what you think, what, how you teach um, navigating system skills in your classroom? Could we get a couple of people to either chat or talk about that with us? Just anything that you do in your classroom that you feel like um, addresses these navigating systems skills. So for those of us who say you know that you're doing it, what does it look like when you do it? So I know in my program in Minneapolis, for example, um, we have, we've been working a lot on counseling and giving feedback to learners about their performance and trying to, um, trying to give them more accountability and more resources for monitoring their own performance. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on, but that includes things like having them tr um, track their test scores and keep track of their attendance each month. So Sarah says she teaches students how to look at the images on Google Maps to see what their destination looks like. Great idea. So if I'm heading out maybe to a job interview, if I can see the neighborhood and the building, that helps me to know when I've reached my destination. Okay. Suzanne. Hi. Can you share with us? Well, um, I observe teachers in the classroom. Suzanne and have... Mayo both have their hands up. Suzanne. Yes. Were you, was there a navigating system skill? Yeah. Can you hear me? The way that you taught that in your classroom? Can you hear me? Okay. Mayo says, we discuss and practice formal and informal emails, notes, and speech. Great example. So helping our students understand. Okay. I can't hear Suzanne. I'm oh, very sorry. I could. Yeah. Suzanne, go ahead. Let's and see if we can. You on our end. Yeah. Can you hear um, me, you guys? Oh, I'm not sure they can hear me, but I can hear Suzanne. Can so hear I'm going to. Suzanne, gonna... but us. Yeah. Are you ready? Suzanne, I can hear you. Muted. Okay. Okay. Unmuted. So I don't want to keep okay. interrupting people. When Suzanne, if, if you're finished talking, can you just let us know? I'm sorry we weren't able to hear you there. Okay. Um, everybody who can hear me, this is Suzanne. Um, I observe student or teachers in the classroom, so these aren't my ideas. But um, simple ideas like um, being very explicit about processes for um, getting something done, like a like a job interview or how you call in sick to work, um, those types of things, being ex explicit and then working those into a role play where the learners have some kind of rubric um, where those different pieces that put it together for someone um, are very uh, noticeable and the other students can tick off the rubric or the teacher can tick off the rubric, those types of things, just one example. 
Okay, Suzanne, we were able to hear you at the end. I'm sorry we missed the beginning, and I apologize for talking over you. I had That's asked okay. Patsy to let me know if that happened, so thanks a lot. Um, I agree with Sarah. Yeah, the idea of teaching students to use a rubric to evaluate not only their own performance, but the performance of their peers, I think, is a great way to practice these skills. Um, that gives them some practice about, like, in the workplace, if they were to do a, a review or a peer review, um, what does that look like? Really good. Okay. Does anyone have another idea that they'd like to share out what, that they might be doing currently? Mayo, I have your hand up. Would you like to share? Actually, Mayo's hand has been up for a while. I'm not totally sure why. Oh, now it's down. Just brought it down. This is Heather, and I just um, something that I do within the career pathway classes that I teach for navigating systems is we try to look at one website uh, a week, and we try to look at where you would go to apply for a job on that website because so many places have them hidden. It could be careers, it could be jobs, or join us. So we try to navigate that online job application system so just the basics but it's that idea about how do we get into that uh, system and Sarah's talking about uh, having students give and participate in performance evaluations at work that's really great okay wonderful so now that we've already talked about this a little bit and we've um, all some of us have shared a little bit about what this looks like in our classrooms we are going to look at this category from the TIFF. So the Navigating Systems category does contain three skills. Each skill is broken down into sub-skills. So if you look on page two of your handouts, you will see those three skills. And underneath them, there is a list of the sub-skills, but they are not in any order. And so what we're going to do right now is a quick matching activity. So you will see the skill flash across, I'm sorry, you'll see the sub-skill flash across the screen, and you're going to chat out to us which of the three main skills you think it matches with, okay? And you can just chat one, two, three, you can put the numbers in the chat box. Okay, so we're going to do which skill is it? So the three skills, seek information or assistance appropriately from others in order okay. to successfully navigate specific systems. Skill two, identify and comply with rules, policies, and performance expectations within institutions and organizational structures. And skill three, identify and follow norms of an organizational structure. Okay, so here we go. We're going to see them fly in. Okay, so identify and utilize resources, print electronic and human that aid in navigating specific systems. So I see people are matching that. A couple people have chatted out too. Now we have a one. Yeah, this is number one. Very good. This is number one. Okay. Oh, you guys were having some issues on getting this uh, to look. To look. Uh, here we go. There. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay, so that was that was just a that was just a trial. <laughs> Follow standard procedures and protocol protocols regarding behavior and tasks. Which which of the three skills do we think that would be? We have a two. Okay, very good. It is two. So smart. Yes. Okay. All right. Identify the hierarchy or chain of command of an institution. I see a three. Excellent. You guys are great. Okay. Next we have identify opportunities for advancement within an organization. Again, I see a three. 
You are so good. That is correct. Wonderful. All right. Differentiate formal and informal speech, dress, and communication. What do we think that is? One, two, or three. I see a couple of twos. Excellent. Great job. Demonstrate appropriate self-advocacy when faced with barriers. One, two, or three. I see a one up there already. Ooh. Excellent job. You guys are great. Recognize, develop, and maintain relationships that may provide further or future assistance. One, two, or three. That's a number one. Excellent. You guys are doing such a great job. Choose appropriate processes for communication within a hierarchy. One, two, or three. I see a three up there. Nice work. Woohoo. Use appropriate documentation processes for tasks. One, two, or three. That is a two. Wow, you guys are so good. I think we just have maybe one or two more. Nope, that was it. Okay. So that was just a quick run through of some of the skills and sub skills included in this category. Okay. And now the next thing we're going to do is look at this transitions integration framework. And we're going to talk about that there are two different TIF documents. We have a complete TIF and we have a TIF at a glance. So right now we're going to be thinking about the complete TIF, which contains those nice activity grids. Okay? Both the TIF at a glance and the complete TIF can be downloaded from the Atlas website. The complete TIF is much longer. It's about a 90-page document and it contains categories and definitions for each of the eight categories, the skills and the sub-skills, and then the sample activity. So this is what adds to the length. For each category, there were some skills and sub-skills that were selected, and some sample activities are given. So they, there is a, there's a sample activity for a beginning level class, an intermediate level class, and an advanced class, okay? There are also technology ideas embedded throughout, and then ways to contextualize. So recognizing that not every learner is preparing to go to work, for example, we have a community context, a school context, and a work context for each of these activity grids, okay? So we are going to, if you have your handout, on page three of the handout, you see an example of the navigating system definition here. You see the skills and sub-skills, okay? What you're going to look at next is on page four. So hopefully you have the activity grids in front of you. You're going to choose one of the skills and a sub-skill. You're going to choose a level, beginning, intermediate, or advanced, and then you're going to think about the activity describe it and talk about, think about, reflect on how you could tweak it to make it work in your classroom, okay? So here is that page from the complete TIFF. This is what the activity grid looks like. So this is skill one, sub-skill A, identify and utilize resources that aid in navigating specific systems. So starting on the left, we have the beginning level, intermediate to advanced on the right. The What is yellow are the activities, and then what is gray are suggestions for making them, integrating that technology piece, okay? So what we are supposed to be doing here 
is looking through these and finding one that might work in our classroom and thinking about how we could use it with our learners. All right. So if everyone could spend a couple of minutes looking at the activity grids and then filling out the information on page four and then we're going to share back in just one or two minutes. Yeah, so think of one that you can use in the classroom and how are you going to tweak it and make it work for your class. We are going to unmute, or excuse me, we're going to mute ourselves at the moment, and then you guys can uh, share in the chat, chat box. Okay, so I hope the directions are clear to everyone. Here is another copy of one of the activity grids. This is for skill one, sub-skill C, demonstrate appropriate self-advocacy when faced with barriers. So we have brainstorm problems and then make polite requests to talk to a manager or supervisor given those different scenarios. So this would be about using polite language. The intermediate level lesson, read a narrative about someone facing a particular problem, brainstorm ways to solve the problem, and develop a script for either speaking or putting into a letter or email. So in my intermediate level ELL class, we actually just practiced this, and it was making a formal letter to a landlord that described an apartment or housing problem and asking them to send a to send a, a repair person to come in and work on that. So yes, we, we do see some people are saying they're not seeing the materials. So again, there is a materials tab that should be above the chat box on your GoToTraining control panel. In that materials section, you should be able to find the handouts I am talking about right now. Um, Patsy's saying that if people send out their emails, she'll send some of the handouts to you. So we have this idea of brainstorming problems. That's one example we could look at. If you don't have, if you don't have the TIFF document. Another one is to identify and utilize resources. That's another one of the skills here. Otherwise, if you have if you have a TIFF in front of you, you're going to go to the navigating systems section of the TIFF and look at all the different activities, okay? Suzanne is asking about the examples. I think it might be uh, best for right now if you just put some in the chat box and then we can have um, people maybe discuss it a little bit further in depth, but maybe put maybe a short sentence in the chat box. Let's take about four minutes for you guys to put something in the chat box and then we'll take a look at it.
Okay, so we're already seeing some really wonderful responses, and thank you for being so flexible with us and for um, some of you we understand maybe aren't seeing the materials right now, and we just want to thank everyone for doing their best and working with us and putting out their ideas. Um, so Sarah said that she talks um, in her low beginning level ELL class about um, finding the way in a, in a building, so a very literal idea of navigating there, learning those words about, you know, entrance and exit and things like that, and um, maybe coming up with some role playing for speaking with the receptionist. We love that idea. Um, Mayo chatted out that she assigns students a list of specific information that they need to find at different places and then they would discuss if they weren't able to find anything and to figure out what's missing so maybe um, for example at a doctor's office having to find out their hours and what kind of insurance they take and maybe if they offer interpreters and then figuring that mm -hmm. out um, within a small group so getting that communication having students work in a team um, which is really, really, really great. Okay. And Suzanne says that she's going to be having a student teacher tonight who plans to have the beginning level learners find using the internet, which St. Paul Library is closest to a fictional character he has made up. Wow. Okay. And after that, they will go to that library's homepage and get transit directions. That is a great idea. So empowering our learners to figure out how to use, like, the Metro Transit um, trip planner that is available on their website to solve a very practical problem about knowing which library is closest to someone's home. That's a wonderful idea. These are really such rich examples. Okay, Sarah says students have to decide whether to use internet or word to complete different computer tasks. I like that because sometimes at our, in my program we routinely use Schoology to communicate with students and oftentimes I'll find if I say you're going to answer a list of questions, for example, in my mind I know that you have to open up a word processing document to answer those questions, but I have students asking me, well, where do I go to answer those questions? And so helping them to recognize when you're faced with a task that involves a computer, what program do I open? Do I need the internet? Do I need Microsoft Word? Do I need a different program? I think that's really, really great. Okay. I think these are wonderful, wonderful ideas. Rosie, our library is closing. So as part of a lesson, I had students develop a list of questions to ask the librarian at the desk. So great. So when students are faced with losing a resource, helping them to, to figure out how to replace that resource maybe um, so that they don't, so that they're able to have like a workaround. What, that's great self-advocate advocacy. It's such a good example of that. So where is it relocating to? How can they still get books and use computers? Wonderful ideas. Okay. Thank you very, very much. I know that we always kind of have to rush through when we're doing the webinar because we only have an hour and a half, um, but I, we really appreciate you sharing all of these wonderful, wonderful ideas with us. Yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is Heather is going to be talking with you through a lesson that she did with her students using the ACES process to assess, complement, evaluate, and study. Okay, so I'm going to say you guys give me an A. An A for the ACES process is that you have to be assessing your instruction, your materials, the curriculum you identify and where the TIF skills are addressed. And this is something that we all do, okay? We assess. Next we have the C. Okay, so can you guys give me a C? And C is for complement. And so that is what we intentionally integrate from the TIF and their skills into our work. We all do it. We're just trying to get people to bring it up a notch and to be intentional about integrating those TIF skills into their current lessons. 
we've got the E, and I think this is really important. The E is for evaluate. How well did that uh, lesson go? How well did the materials work that you used? You have to actually try the lesson and to see how you can uh, improve it when you use it again. We have the S, and the S is for study and reflect. I think sometimes this might be what a lot of teachers don't have time to do. It's the time to study and reflect. But I think it's also really something we have to do. We have to be intentional about thinking how well uh, were the students learning and what else do I need to uh, make uh, improvements in my lesson. So this is all the ACES process, and we'll be doing this with um, the lesson that uh, we'll be watching through the video. So you can see we'll be looking at the A and the C, or the assess uh, our instruction, our materials, and then complement. And so we're going to be looking at the pre-ACES lesson components, and this is going to be um, on pages 5, and six of your handouts. On the left side, we have the pre-ACES lesson components. On the right side, you'll see how I tip the lesson uh, with ACES skills from the TIFF. And so we're going to be looking at that. We're going to have you guys look at the left side. And in the chat box, I want you guys to chat the skills or sub-skills that you can identify in each of the lesson components. I realize there's a lot of going back to your um, tip at a glance to look at the skills and sub-skills, as well as looking at the lesson. So you might want to have the two side by side if at all possible. So first we look at the pre-ACES lesson plan. And for a warm-up, in the pre-ACES lesson, there was actually no warm-up listed. So there isn't going to be anything on the pre-ACES lesson plan for the assessment column of the warm-up. Okay. So that is not available. Okay. Next we're going to look at the introduction. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, when I was working on this navigating systems, it was a hard concept to come around, but as Stephanie pointed out in our program, we're looking at how to integrate learners' um, educational goals into our instructional practices and conferencing. So I thought one way would be to have the students do uh, an online learning style inventory or one in paper. So that was the pre-ACES. So if you look at the introduction, that's what I had students do. They had to um, do a little brainstorming about auditory, visual, kinesthetic learning styles, and I was going to explain to them that they'd have a, an opportunity to take the online learning style. So that was the pre-ACES lesson. I'd like to see if you guys can chat out if you saw any of the skills or sub-skills from the TIFF at a glance in that introduction. So you'd be chatting out like Oh, exactly Next like week. that. One okay. A. Wonderful. Way to kick us off. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay. So, yep, we have one A in there. Um, next, we'll go to the guided practice. So, again, we're looking on page five in the left hand column. The guided practice, and this was I was going to model the students on how to use the online learning style inventory. We're going to go to the URL, we're going to answer the questions or statements aloud, and then choose the answer that best represent themselves. Um, of course, reminding the students it's about their own answer. Um, so I'd like to have you guys chat out what skill from the tip at a glance you think is there in the guided practice. Okay, Jennifer, thanks for being there with us. Okay, we had one A, but I think possibly you could get um, two in there. Okay, um, it's not uh, an exact science in deciding which skill or sub-skill. I think uh, Suzanne put two D in there. Um, actively reflect on personal performance and seek feedback. Okay, 
or use appropriate documentation for a task. I could see that. We were still identifying and utilizing resources. Next, we have our independent practice for the uh, pre-ACES lesson. And this is where the students were actually performing their online learning style inventory. Um, we give the students 10, 20, to 15 minutes to do the 24 questions. There is also a paper version if there's not the uh, technology component. So which skill or sub-skill did you guys find in the guided practice? Or excuse me, the independent practice. Okay, proper computers procedures. So we have, we were just sticking with that 1A, but I think we could get uh, follow standard procedures and protocols regarding the behavior and tasks. Okay, so they would, yeah, have to turn off their cell phone in the computer lab, use the computer. So I could see we could bring that in there. Great, Sarah. Okay, next uh, we can look at the extension activity. And there was not a, an extension activity in the pre-ACES lesson. And for the assessment, I was just going to um, have the students uh, complete the online and then check on their results. So I was pretty much staying with uh, the category 1A. What we would like you guys to do now is take a look at the tipped lesson, the post-ACES lesson. It is a segment. It's about, I think, 17 minutes long. Uh, it is in the material section, if you're able to access that. If you can't grab that video clip or get on YouTube, uh, Patsy can uh, put it out there for you guys to see. While you're watching the lesson, I want you to think about the way that the lesson was complemented from the pre-ACES. So remember, the pre-ACES was brainstorming um, different learning styles, taking the online learning style inventory, and reporting our answers. So what we'd like you to do is watch the video. We're going to come back in 17 minutes. Okay. So it will be at 3.35. We will come back and have you guys talk about the compliments that were made to the lesson. I realize we took the tape test yesterday. We're going to be focusing on what can be our next steps in our goal. And for most of you, your goal is to get a GED. <coughs> is that true? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And for some people, like Ahmed, it's to get a higher score in the AccuPlacer test. So today we've got two items on our agenda. We're going to be doing some work here first to prepare us to move into the computer lab. Our first agenda item is about our learning style. And I'm going to ask you, Roberto, can you tell us what that objective is? I can uh, determine my preference learner style with a, an outline server. Okay, so we know that determine means what? To figure out, to find out. out. Yeah. What about preferred? <clears throat> Uh, what you like, it. What you like exactly. So you're going to determine or find, find out your preferred, what you like, learning style. Have you guys heard that before, learning style? Yes. Uh, yes. Some yes. people have. The way you want to learn. Yeah, yeah. the way you want to learn yeah. or maybe you like it, you know? the way that you enjoy learning yeah. or maybe the way that you just learn best. Yeah. So we're going to have you guys take an online survey when we get into the computer lab so each one of you can find out what is your preferred learning style. We have different learning styles. We talk about three different learning styles. One we call auditory. One style we call visual. And another style we call kinesthetic. And some people call it tactile. So you can see for those of us in education, we talk about three different learning styles. 
I think some of these vocabulary words, you guys might have a little bit of idea of what it means. Does anyone know what they think auditory might mean? What do you think on VSCs? My liking. Um, but auditory is not going to be watching, it's going to be what I'm talking about? Hearing. Hearing, okay? So, visual might be what on VSCs? Watching, okay? So, auditory, think about, we talk uh, about hearing, okay? And sometimes that includes speaking, because you hear what you speak, correct? So visual is just what you said, Abdiasis, and what were you saying? By watching. By watching, okay, so you can watch, okay. Where some people might say, see, okay. Another uh, part of visual might be reading, because we use our eyes visually when we read. This last one, kinesthetic or tactile, might be new for you guys. But someone might know. What do you think, Antonio? Practice. Practice or touch. Yeah, touch. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be touch. Or some of us like to do things, right, with our hands. So what I'd like to have you guys do in your table groups is think of ways you can use these learning styles in the class. What would it look like for you? Visual. Yeah, no, no, visual. Yeah, like she says she likes to make notes. I can use a flashcard. I can write the meaning. The words and the meaning. And on the side, I can write the synonyms. I don't like it. Yeah, I like to listen in class so that I can remember. I like to listen in class? Yeah, I like to listen to the teacher. So I can understand. If I don't listen to how they understand, you usually write. You have to remember the vocabulary. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the answers are going to be seldom, sometimes, or often. Maybe we can go okay. and do this. Yeah. yeah, what I'd like to do is because I like to see if what you guys think about yourself now matches with what this online inventory might say. So I'm going to give you guys all a piece of paper, and I want you to write on one side what you think your learning style is right now, and then we'll take the test and you can see if it matches up. Do you remember the three categories? Yes. Auditory, Auditory um, visual, or tactile, tactile or kinesthetic. Which learning style do you think you are? Okay. Elsa, what is your learning style? My learning style is it's the auditory. Auditory. auditory and yes. Is that what you thought it was going to be? That's what I thought and that's what I do. I tape my, um, my own voice and then I listen with, by the headphones. Okay, you already have a good strategy. Yes, Excellent. Good. Oh. Elizabeth, what is your learning style? Okay, and is that what you thought it was going to be? Yes. Okay, so how about your husband? What is his style? The same. The same, okay. Maybe the two of you can, can work together, okay, to be. Thank you. So if you guys look over here in our agenda, we are going to be working on our educational learning plan. And so we're going to take the information that you gathered yesterday when you went to the computer lab to do your online learning style inventory, we're going to take that information along with some other pieces of information and create our educational learning plan. The reason that we are doing this is it is one way that you can navigate the educational system. When I use this word navigate, okay, what does that mean to you, navigate? Search. Uh, so it's not quite search. Uh, it's go around. Go around. Yeah. yeah. So you can say to go, or maybe we'll say move forward. Okay. And maybe we can do some searching, moving in your direction for How your about goal. About explore. Okay. Explore. Maybe you can be exploring. We want to reach your educational goal. For most of you, what is that goal? GED? GED, okay, for a lot of you, okay. Your goal is a GED. For some of you, it might be, Ahmed, your goal is a little different. What is your goal? So college, okay, because you have a diploma. So you want to get into college, and you want to have a good AccuPlacer score, okay. For some of you, that goal might be I need more English and more academic vocabulary to help my kids in school. We all have different goals. What we're going to work on today is how to navigate or move forward to that goal. We're going to use a few pieces of information to reach that goal. We have our different styles. How many of you are auditory learners? Do we have some auditory learners? Okay. How many of you guys were visual learners? We have a lot of visual learners. Anyone with the kinesthetic? Right. Was that you, Arturo, kinesthetic? No. No. Okay. <laughs> so I'm kind of surprised because usually I've had at least one person who's kinesthetic. Okay. So, but in this class we have auditory and visual learners. What I'd like to do is have you guys split into two groups according to your learning style. So I'm going to have the auditory learners over here. You can take your things. I just need a pencil. You can leave your things there, actually. We just need a pencil. And then we're going to have the visual learners over on this side. Okay? Can you guys go to your two styles? So, auditory learners, I need to have you guys listen carefully because we know the visual learners. They're watching, right? So, what we're going to have you do is read some information about the auditory learner. So, what I have gathered for you here is some information about some of the ideas and strategies auditory learners 
can use in the classroom. It can help you here while you're pursuing your GED, but it also can help you when you go into college, where you might not have the support uh, of the ABE classroom. So I would like you guys to read these. What you're going to do is you're going to be the experts, and you guys are going to present some strategies to this table over here who are the visual learners. <coughs> okay? The visual learners over here are going to read about strategies that visual learners can use in the classroom. And they are going to present the strategies to the auditory learner. Does that make sense? According to you. Uh -huh. According to my idea, yeah. I think it is uh, easy to reproduce simple letters or words by by hearing them. So like like this, to keep it like uh, like notes, okay. and it's easy to to, mm -hmm. to show them, and they can visual. And also yeah. Helps us to, yeah. To, yeah. Or what do you think? What's your idea? Or your opinion? Which one? Mm, that's a good idea. Use the highlighter for information point in the text. So it's very important to like, highlight the like, main idea or the important part of the, the past time that you read. So that you can quick, whenever you want to back and get the information, you can find quick. So I think that'd be, that'd be a good one. The other one I. And what does that mean to you, Gregorio? If you had to paraphrase that in your own words, what would you say? I would like to see the front of the room. And then robot is gonna be in front of me, and then I can see the teacher how she's explaining us. And do you usually try to sit so that you can see the teacher? Um, not really, but I always try to see the teacher how she's teaching us. Okay. Us, we need to have like uh, pencils or pen so that when the teacher is teaching, we have like to take notes. Okay. Yeah, and do so you do that yourself now, Alex? Uh, not really, but I think it's a good strategy, so I might try to do that. Your okay, visual Tim. learner? Use a mental picture to remember things. Do you do that now? Yeah. Okay, so. Excellent, so keep it up. What are some of the strategies for auditory learners that you're going to teach the visual learners? Um, we are um, discussing about uh, what points can help to, um, to that guy. Okay, visual learners. Yeah, to the visual learning. Uh, and within um, one, uh, one good idea could be this good idea with friends. And um, like to participate in class discussions or debate. Okay. And do you guys do that in class? Do you yeah, like to discuss? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you guys? Uh, reciting information over and over. Okay. Again, uh, for reciting, like something you are memorized and then you recite again. So okay. that is really good for uh, to memorize something. Does that help you? Yes, that's, I try some of them, but it works. I talked to you about uh, your educational plan. Okay. And I see that you put your goal is to do what? Uh, get my GED. GED, excellent. Yes. And your preferred learning style was what? Visual. Visual, yes. Yeah. That my preferred it was? Learning is visual. Yeah. Did you think it was that you were a visual learner before we took the. Yeah, I think so. Okay, yes. excellent. And I like the strategies that you have here. This one, you know, it's very near to my heart, reading 30 minutes a day. Okay. I like how you say doing homework is okay. going to be one. And can you describe this one a little bit more about your strategy? You were also talking about it in class. Uh, I'm talking about the, you know, every, maybe you, 
we were in 15 words every for like two weeks. Yeah. And and my my goal is to make flashcard with the corresponding 15 words. Okay. And um, for how say remember or yeah. practice my the learning in the 15 words. Okay, excellent. I like that. Strategy. The meaning. Or Hi everyone, we're back. I'm hoping that you guys are all back. We'll see what you thought of the complimented post ACES um, tip lesson. All right. Here we go. Okay. So again, we're going to be, yep, great. You're back, Suzanne, Sarah. Um, we're going to have you guys share out some of the um, skills that you saw so here we we are we're going back to your handout we're looking on page five and we're looking at the post aces lesson plan and if you remember the pre aces didn't have a warm up but in this one I had a warm up and you guys were able to watch it um, again brainstorming with learning styles um, uh, as the warm up I also had the pre lesson work which is uh, not usually part of the ACES process but in order to create an educational learning plan the students had to take the tape test they had to take my G they had to get a my GED account they had to take the GED ready practice tests so there was a lot of work that was involved to help them navigate that system of getting their GED but if we look just at the warm-up I'd like to see what you guys could see for skills and sub skills to complement um, the lesson. What ways was it different that you guys saw than the pre-ACES lesson? So Suzanne has one A. Okay. Rosie is back. Excellent. And also and Suzanne, we also have that as well. Okay, we're doing 1A, identifying and utilizing those resources. If we take a look at the pre and post side-by-side -side lessons for the introduction, this is what I was explaining to the students about um, working um, online and taking the learning style inventory, and I was modeling it with the students. So Craig is shouting out a 1B let's take a look okay so here's the post introduction I'm reminding the students they're answering for themselves we have to model how they do it and that one we have as uh, 1A and we had a 2B which if you guys look at your tip at a glance it's use appropriate documentation for tasks okay Next, we're looking at the guided practice in the post, and this is where the students were doing a jigsaw reading, so they were taking information from their learning, their own learning style, and then they were in groups, and they were going to teach the other learning styles uh, strategies that they could use. I think we have 1B here, 1C, uh, 2A, two, uh, 2D two two from Suzanne. And we thought, it's going to show up here, we had 1C, 2A, 2C, 2D, 2E. We were trying to get a lot of different skills in there. Because also acknowledging mistakes, recognizing consequences, maybe offering options for redress if in working in groups they weren't able to uh, get the correct information. Next, we're looking at the independent process. And that was the students were then going to develop their own educational learning plan um, that were that was pertaining to their own learning style that they found out about online. Um, and the students were going to fill out the educational learning plan and their testing log document. You didn't see a lot of that in the video because I didn't have someone to video uh, tape that portion of the lesson. Okay. 
Yeah, Sarah, deeper dive into 1A than the first lesson. We're not just utilizing, uh, not just identifying, exactly, we're utilizing and not just identifying. Um, and we were saying 1A, 2B, 2D, again 2E. If you guys go to the pre-ACES lesson, there was not an extension activity, but it was uh, in part of the post lesson. We didn't see that much of it in the video, but I did have the students, when they conferenced with me, use the educational plan and their testing logs, so they were keeping track of their own information, which is self-management, uh, another tip skill. Um, and then the students are reflecting upon the plan. In fact, next week, before we do our next round of tape testing, they'll be taking out that plan to make adjustments as needed. So I'd like to see what you guys saw in that part. We have Sarah is saying 1B, yeah, developing mm -hmm. a relationship with the teacher, exactly. Um, Alva was very nice to uh, let me videotape the conference. Not every student wanted to uh, videotape the conference. Again, I added 1A, 2B, 2D, and 2E, okay. So you can see that there was a lot of complementing to what would have been a very simple lesson on developing uh, or learning more about an online interest inventory. Okay, Sarah, I like the way that the teacher conferred with students individually. Yeah, that's something that we do in our program. At the end of every testing, or at least once a quarter, students meet with the teachers and talk about ways that they can be uh, reaching their goals. And most of the students in my particular class, their goal is to get a GED or to be able to take the AccuPlacer test at Minsku. And so um, it is a way for me to um, help them more, but then they need to be helping themselves as well. And that's what part of the educational learning plan is doing, helping them to define and navigate their own system. We'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about another process, and that is tiffing your classroom. <laughs> so before we completely transition away from the lesson that we have looked at, the pre and particularly the post with that wonderful video, if anyone has any other comments or questions about that lesson, what you saw in the video, the way Heather approached the material with her students, please feel free to chat them out. Um, we don't want to just leave any any questions unanswered. We don't want to not give people the opportunity to share or ask questions. Um, we are just going to keep going with the presentation because we have a little bit more to get through, but please do ask us if you have any questions about that lesson, the way that it was developed, anything like that. Um, right now, the image that you see on your screen is the tiffing your classroom visual. What this visual is supposed to represent are the ways in which we as teachers can make our classroom environments mirrors of our target environment. So what that means is if we are preparing our students, for example, to be successful in the workplace, then a lot of the language, routines, norms, and technology that we use in our classrooms should be mirrors or should reflect the same kind of language, routines, etc., that the students will be expected to know and use when they get to their target environment. And so I think it's really helpful to be thinking about what will be expected of our students when they, when they transition into whatever is next for them, and then helping them to get comfortable with some of those language, routine, etc. before they leave our classrooms so that those things aren't barriers to them when they leave. So we are going to be looking in your handout packet. Okay. Routines. Yep. So first of all, we have routines. Okay. We have learning task formats. We have technology. We have norms, and we have language. And I believe we're going to see some more complete definitions of these things on the following slides. 
So routines are a sequence of actions regularly followed. Um, so we have a routine process. Norms are standards of ex acceptable behavior or expectations within a specified context. Sometimes we get asked how are routines and norms different. I think that the more you expose your students to a norm in the classroom, the more it could become routine for them. So if we set the expectation that students must notify their teacher of an absence, if that is the norm, that's the expectation, then when students routinely call in or send us emails letting us know that they're not going to be in class, that's when it becomes a routine. Yeah, and I think even taking it to another level that they're calling their manager or supervisor that they're going to be late for work or they um, need to take time off or something, it's just taking it outside of the classroom to another area, another target. So it's sort of that idea of transferring ownership. Um, so maybe in the classroom, I'm the one setting the expectation, but then when it becomes routine for the students, they're doing it not because anyone's necessarily telling them to, but because they've learned that that's the proper thing to do within a given situation. Um, so next we'll go to learning task formats. These are routine structures for activities and tasks that provide practice of lesson content. So these are things like using a graphic organizer, for example, with a student, using a rubric with a student, which was something that was brought up earlier today, doing role play activities with students. All of those would be learning task formats when they add a particular structure to an activity. Next is language. So these are vocabulary and language structures that are necessary to effectively address a specified tip skill. Um, so some of you might be familiar with the idea of accountable talk, which helps students be able to share their opinions in a respectful way. So something like saying, I understand what you're saying, however or I agree with you because helping our students learn how to use that language not just in not just orally but also in writing and then technology of course we want to be using technology that mirrors what is necessary in the target environment so most most of our students if they're going to be having a job if they're going to be going to um, a two or four year college they're going to need to know how to use email for example so explaining to students how to set up an email how to add an attachment how to upload and download documents those are all going to be necessary skills for their target environment okay so here we have our definitions and now we're going to do some some matching here so which TIFF method is which TIFF methods can be labeled in more than one way. So expecting students to email assignments is both technology and a norm. So that's two things there. Um, and then it could also maybe become routine. Expecting students to speak courteously is a norm, but when you highlight the language structure with these different modals here, it is also a language method. I talked about modals in my classroom today will, could, can, may, might. The important thing is that all of these methods reinforce TIFF skills consistently and authentically regardless of lesson content. So really what this boils down to are these are ways that you can be TIFFing in your classroom even if you don't do a lesson plan for a group of students every day. Maybe you work in a drop-in center and you have just one student who comes in a few times a week, but you have an expectation that that student comes in, picks up their binder, and has their materials organized in a particular way. Well, you're still using the TIFF, and that's still in keeping with our ACES practices. It's just not applying the ACES process to a lesson, per se. It's more like applying it to how you structure your classroom and your time with your students. 
Okay, so we're going to do an activity here where you're going to let us know which of the following methods go our technology, which are routine, which are norm, and you can chat that out using the chat box. Okay, so I'm going to um, flip to an activity that Stephanie and I have within the navigating systems realm, and then you would have to tell us which uh, tiffing method we use. So for example, we have the testing log, which, which is what I created for my students. So the students have to um, use the MABE portal, so they're checking, checking their own scores, their most recent TABE in this instance, because I have higher level students, and that they'll be uh, accountable for their own, re recording their own test scores. It's not always coming from the teacher. So which method do you guys think this is? It's a routine, says Mayo. Anyone else? Routine, says Teresa. Okay, and we do have that as a routine. So I've started with my students working on a routine that I'm hoping will help them. Uh, exactly, Sarah, I like how you say that. Repeat the process. It's going to go over and over. I have the date and the score there. Next, we're going to check here. Okay, on page eight of your handout, if you guys need to refer to what those five TIF methods are, it's on page eight of your handout. But let's go here. We have report and absence. So uh, in our program, we hand out a syllabus uh, for every quarter, and in it we have to review with the students uh, how they go about reporting absences. So in this case, I point out that I have a voicemail, or my preferred method is via email. Which TIF method is that, you guys? Suzanne says it's a norm. Norm. Okay. Technology and norm. Yeah, Rosie, because I, I am telling them, use the um, take responsibility, Sarah. You, I think, understand these TIF formats. It is a norm. Okay. Next, we have another activity, okay, and this is the accountable talk. For example, when the students I had working in a jigsaw, they would have to use um, some of this accountable talk. A lot of it comes from our um, uh, effective communication category within the TIFF. So which method do you guys think this is? Uh, Teresa is, is letting us know it's language. Language, yep, polite, language. You guys are all TIFF methods experts. Okay. Language, okay. Next we have here, okay, responding to a survey. So this was something similar to what you saw in the, the video where the students had to do the online survey. Um, I also do this in every lesson that we do. Uh, we do a pre and post evaluation to show that students are learning and we have learning tasks. It can be technology, Sarah, you're right, because I had them in the video go online. But what we're really getting at here is understanding how to reply to a survey like this where there's a Likert scale with the one to five. Okay, so we have a learning task format. So it is a format that they are um, learning how actually what the lesson 11 is going to be about but then also uh, learning about their own uh, knowledge gain within that lesson. We have another example here and this is that the students go online to the student portal in MABE and the students then are um, using this portal in order to uh, get information for their own uh, testing scores. And Teresa, you have technology. Okay, anyone else? Technology, exactly. Sarah, it is just like in the workplace, technology. And you guys are right, so five out of five. Excellent, pat yourselves on the back, okay. So what I'd like to have you guys do is think, pair, share, and we're going to be do, doing the sharing within the chat box, as you guys have been doing right now. So what is the TIFF method in your classroom that already addresses 
one or more of the navigating systems sub skills. So I'd like, it says here to describe it to your partner, but we're just going to all work together. So think about a method that you already do that could help us um, with navigating systems, one of those sub skills, if you guys can chat it out. So if you have any routines or norms, learning task formats that you're already using, we'd love to hear a couple of examples. So you've seen some of ours. We're going to take about two minutes and we're going to hopefully some of you will share some of yours. We are going to unmute ourselves at the moment while you're typing. Okay. Okay, so Sarah says she uses language structures. Okay, so maybe Sarah, um, you know, I maybe, maybe, I hope I'm not putting words in your mouth. I've been doing a lot with my writing students using um, sentence frames and paragraph frames recently to help them really, um, for example, cement how to write the opening paragraph for that argument essay on the GED. And I've been showing them a real structured kind of frame for doing that. So maybe um, something like that with the language structures. I've done something similar for crafting a, a comparison contrast paragraph where I really give them a frame and they're filling in their own information. Okay, and Heather says that she's using a lot of graphic organizers for reading in her reading classes. I know that Heather uses those a lot to examine text structure. Um, and Sarah says homework or class papers from previous days are available, so they just have to maybe pick them up. I've sometimes placed folders on the sign-in table at the back of my room. Maybe Sarah does something similar where they have to go into their class and pick up what they've missed or what's being returned. Okay. Okay. Jennifer says she uses the North Star Digital Literacy Assessment to help um, both herself and her students see where they're at with their computer skills. Maybe some other people use that as well, which is a great resource. And, and Sarah says that she's doing quite similar things. I think what's great is that we're able to acknowledge that we're already doing so much of this. We now though can put uh, language that we can all share and we have common language in our to talk about having these TIF methods in our classroom. So thank you guys for sharing these great ideas. Okay, so we did a pre-poll at the beginning of our webinar. Now we're going to do a poll here towards the end. We're going to assess how ready are you to take the navigating systems plunge. Okay, so we're going to launch this poll. You can answer the question in just a moment and then we'll share the results. Okay, you should be able to see the poll now. So you're just going to click on one of those responses. We have 29% having voted, 43%, 57%, 71%, 86%. We'll wait just a minute, see if anyone else 100% wonderful. So hopefully you can see these results. What a great day it is as presenters when we see that nobody is shaking in her boots and we got no huh. I thought I was in the uh, I thought I was in the Cinco de Mayo webinar uh, here. So. Um, we're glad to see that we have 29% of our participants ready to take a plunge. You're ready to jump in and start using some of these skills or continue with more confidence using these skills in your classroom. 57% dipping a toe. All right. I apologize for that, you guys. Something just came up. Okay, here we go. I apologize for that. That was my uh, fault there. So here we go, and I just don't know if um, people just want to wade in the water and not take the full plunge because of the temperatures. Okay, <laughs> maybe if it was July, you'd all want to take a full plunge in the water. 
Okay, so we just have a couple more things to get through. We want to let you know how you continue, how you can continue being involved with ACES. Um, so I know some of you have been involved for a long time, like Rosie and Suzanne and Mayo, done some of the um, some of the PLCs. You've been facilitators. You've worked on the project very intent intensely and some of you um, might might not have done quite as much but coming today shows that you're interested in learning more so on the Atlas website you can access any of the TIFF lens webinars they have all been archived you can see the lessons go through the go through the videos see those videos go through the lesson plans for each of the TIFF lens categories, and I believe that there were six developed this year, you can download three complete lessons, a beginning level lesson, an intermediate level lesson, and an advanced level lesson to use in your classrooms. Um, there are, right now, I think a second round of PLCs going on that are focusing on some of the categories that were not included earlier this fall or last year. We've yeah. been going around to the different regions for the workshops. Um, I think those might all be wrapped up now. Um, however, I do believe there'll probably be some ACES sessions at Summer Institute. Um, I am not sure about the Adult Institute, Adult ESL Institute next week. Um, but you can definitely go on the, I saw that the uh, Minnesota Connects newsletter came out today. Hopefully you're on the mailing list for that and you can see about upcoming webinars and PD opportunities through that newsletter. If anyone is not getting that newsletter, um, then please be sure to send an email to Patsy or myself and we'll let you know how to get that. You, you need to contact um, Marisa about that. So Patsy says she'll talk about Adult, ES Insti Adult ESL Institute. Sure. Yeah, yeah, can you hear me okay? I can hear you Great. Fine. Just I know we're out of time, but I just want to mention um, at the Adult ESL Institute, which is next Thursday and Friday out in Minnetonka, we have uh, a session. Nikki Carson Padilla is doing a session on uh, project-based learning, projects that boost transition skills. And then for those of you who might work with very, very low-level students, low-level ESL, Dan Bruski from Hopkins is doing a session on um, kind of using ACEs and the transitions integration framework at the very lowest levels of ESL. So a couple of good things to look forward to as well as lots of other related sessions around, of course, ESL, but we're all working towards common goals for our students. So you'll, you'll find that there's plenty of overlap in these other areas as well. So if you haven't yet, you have until Friday to register for that event. Yeah, and I would say that there are some amazing uh, presenters. Yes. Uh, Susan Flynn uh, Miller, I, I am hopefully going to be able to check her out, her presentation out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Language, yeah. Okay, well, we want to thank everyone who took time out of their day to join us. We really appreciated um, having you all here. You were wonderful participants. We really were so happy to see so much active participation in this webinar, and we hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you okay. so much. Happy Cinco and happy Teacher Appreciation Day. Hey, thank you, Heather and Stephanie. Thanks for your work and your leadership on this. Okay. Thank you.